On this edition of Primetime News, during today's trade and investment meeting, President Bakane laid out policies covering trade, tourism, venture capital and construction sectors as part of efforts to help achieve a balance in domestic consumption and exports. Korea Central Bank holds its key rate steady to support government's efforts to boost the economy and encourage spending. The ruling party and the government try to get back to work, namely passing the supplementary budget plan. But with Henry's vacant floor leadership and strong opposition from the other side of the aisle, it's not going to be smooth sailing. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello and welcome to Primetime News on this Thursday, July 9th. I'm Daniel Che. And I'm Hong Jie. Thank you for joining us. Well, it's no news that the Korean economy has been hit hard both internally and externally. There are factors uh, that's at play here in recent months. So in response, the government laid out measures today to boost trade and promote certain industries such as construction. All right, Che Yusun starts us off. A number of external factors such as the weakened Japanese yen and falling oil prices have cut Korea's export volume in the first half of this year by 5 percent compared to a year earlier. This, coupled with reduced spending and investment at home due to the MERS outbreak, has prompted the government to devise additional stimulus measures on top of a 20 billion U.S. dollar stimulus package that's on the way. At Thursday's trade and investment meeting, President Park Geun-hye laid out policies covering various sectors, including trade and construction, to achieve a balance in domestic consumption and exports. While highlighting that Korea has fared relatively well in exports, jumping a spot in the global rankings to sixth, the president said the country's export-driven economy will not be revived without a recovery of trade. The trade ministry has pledged to more than double Korea's trade volume from the first half of the year by spending more than $100 billion from the public and private sectors to enhance the competitiveness of major export items and to financially support small to mid-sized exporters. The ministry did not, however, present a specific plan for raising the price competitiveness of Korean products against their Japanese rivals. Shifting gears to the construction industry, President Bak said spurring renovation and the reconstruction of aging facilities is expected to encourage businesses to spend more, and the government has pledged to ease regulations in the sector. In venture capital, officials vow to create an ecosystem where growth and returns are guaranteed. Choi Yusun, Arirang News. Let's now zoom into the country's tourism sector that took the biggest hit from the MERS outbreak. The government pledged extra financial support and more. Our Kim ji reports. With concerns about the MERS outbreak receding, demand for travel-related products is picking up fast. Tickets to spa resorts and water parks like these jumped 450 percent from the week of June, and reservations for condo rentals and campsites also spiked nearly 150 percent. I came to the water park today with my family and friends to enjoy the summer holiday. I know there are a lot of concerns about the MERS outbreak in Korea, but I believe the worst is over, and I'm not too concerned about it at this point. It's welcome news for the local tourism sector, which has been rocked by the MERS outbreak. The industry's business survey index for the second quarter, based on roughly 150 travel companies, shows sentiment was even lower than it was in the months following last year's deadly Seoho ferry sinking. To address these concerns, the Culture and Tourism Ministry on Thursday outlined plans to support the tourism industry at a trade and investment promotion meeting led by President Park Geun-hye. 먼저 관광 산업의 활성화 방안입니다. 메르스 사태로 어려움을 겪고 있는 관광 산업은 이번 기회에 아예 경쟁력을 제고할 수 있는 근본적 대책을 마련해야 합니다. 
A culture ministry vowed to launch a global campaign letting people know that it's safe to travel to Korea now that the MERS outbreak has subsided and said it will also develop targeted programs for tourists of different ages and nationalities. The government also says it'll waive fees for group visas for travelers from China and Southeast Asian countries until September. The government is currently supporting the local tourism industry, which has been hit the hardest by the outbreak, with around 79.2 million U.S. dollars in special loans. And it plans to increase that through a budget supplement of around $264 million later this year. Kim Jeon, Arirang News, Hongcheon. As you've just seen, the Korean government is moving fast, introducing new measures to boost the economy. And today, the first full assembly of the July extraordinary session also started off by calling a swift passage of a supplementary budget bill. For this and more on the political arena, we turn to our Park ji -won. In its first gathering since the resignation of ruling Senori Party floor leader Yoo Seung Min the day before, the party's Supreme Council emphasized the importance of party unity. Speaking at their regular meeting on Thursday morning, the council vowed to establish a better line of communication with the presidential office. We took this opportunity to achieve stronger party unity and pursue politics for the public. We will prioritize the economy and the livelihoods of the people through better communication among the party, the government and the presidential office. The party plans to select its new floor leader next Tuesday at a general meeting of its lawmakers. The Supreme Council said the party might use consensus to make the decision rather than a vote in order to avoid further conflict between factions. Meanwhile, the first full assembly of the July extraordinary session began with a budget speech from the president on Thursday, in which she called on the parliament to cooperate in passing a supplementary budget bill for approximately 10.4 billion U.S. dollars. The budget message was read by Prime Minister Hwang Kyo-wan. The supplementary budget plan includes items needed to overcome the instability and difficulty that have arisen due to the MERS outbreak and the current drought. Once the plan is confirmed, the government will swiftly implement the budget to help stabilize the economy. The main opposition party, however, criticized the plan and presented their own, which cuts the $10.4 billion proposal to $5.5 billion. We can't agree with a plan to inject nearly $5 billion that aims to make up for a tax revenue deficit without any plans to revamp spending or raise corporate taxes. Our party will cut items not related to the MERS outbreak, the drought or the livelihoods of the people. The ruling party and the government hope to pass the plan by the 20th of the month, but due to the vacancy in the floor leadership of the ruling party and the determined objections from the opposition party, it's not clear whether they will be able to achieve their goal. Park ji -won, Arirang News. Korea's central bank lowered the country's growth forecast to the 2 percent range, already a second readjustment this year. It's a lower forecast than what the government expects the country's growth to stand at over 3 percent with the help of extra money. And the BOK has decided to hold its key interest rate of 1.5 percent for another month. For more on this story, we turn to our Shin Semin. The Bank of Korea says the country's economy is expected to grow 2.8 percent this year, down 0.3 percentage points from its previous projection. The downgrade comes as the central bank estimates the country's second quarter growth to stand at a mere 0.4 percent. The unexpected MERS outbreak and the current drought crisis, on top of slowing exports, contributed to the downward revision. He added that recent uncertainties in the global economy, including Greece's debt crisis and the drop in the Chinese stock market, also did their part in revising down the forecast. The 2 percent range growth even takes into account the supplementary budget recently proposed by the government, worth 10 billion U.S. dollars, which some are seeing as not being enough to support the country's growth. Its best bet is that the extra fund cancels out negative effects of the MERS outbreak and the damages from the drought. Others add that the spread of the MERS virus is just a minor addition to a larger issue hampering growth. The economy is in need of a much-anticipated reformations, such as the minimum wage hike, 
Without such reforms, the economy is likely to stay in the current low growth phase, eventually suppressing consumers' tendency to spend. Experts are voicing the importance of the government's drive for structural reforms as the country's fiscal and monetary policies don't seem to be enough to counter uncertainties lingering at home and abroad. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. After a dozen meetings and weeks of wrangling between labor and management, Korea's minimum wage for next year has been set. But according to our Han Da-eun, the spat isn't quite over yet, as the government and management still face strong opposition from unions that are planning to strike against that decision. Take a look. Korea's minimum wage for next year has been set at 6,031 per hour, up 8.1 percent from this year. That's about five U.S. dollars and 30 cents. When calculated into a monthly wage, given an employee works 209 hours, it's roughly $1,100. The Minimum Wage Council of Korea approved the wage hike during Wednesday's meeting, the 12th of its kind, despite the notable absence of the labor unions. It was supposed to be a full 27-member meeting, but all nine labor union members didn't show up in opposition. The unions representing the country's workers said they will formally object to the decision and go on a general strike next Wednesday. They initially demanded an almost 80 percent raise from this year. We expected at least a double-digit raise. 6,031 is way too low for workers struggling to make ends meet or to resolve Korea's worsening income polarization. The Korea Employers Federation, on the other hand, says a big jump could expose small and mid-sized firms to greater risk as uncertainties from the MERS outbreak and the Greek debt crisis linger. They added that those firms will now have to bear the burden of an extra $2 billion in labor costs. Korea's minimum wage was increased by 2.7% in 2010 and 5.1% 5 the following year, and by 7.1% in 2015. It stood at about 4,101 in 2010, 4,301 in 2011, and 5,601 in 2015. The Minister of Employment and Labor will officially fix and notify the approved minimum wage by August 5th after a 20-day objection period ends. Han Dan, Arirang News. Korea's exports in the information and communications technology sector have risen for two straight months. The science ministry said on Thursday that ICT exports stood at around 14 billion U.S. dollars in June, up. 0.2% from the same month last year. The ministry official said the rise was driven by exports of Korean smartphones like the Galaxy S6 and G4 and semiconductors, which have increased in recent months. This also helped boost Korea's ICT trade balance to 6.67 billion U.S. dollars in June, up more than 3% from a year ago. China's financial market saw a rebound this Thursday, bringing shares up in Korea, too. But analysts say it's not a sign of relief, holding on to the worries of China's recent stock meltdown on top of the Greek crisis. Many are saying the situation in China is actually the larger global economic concern. Here's our Kwan so with the details. Like jumping from a cold pool into a hot tub. Korea stocks experienced a roller coaster Thursday with the lowest and highest point of the main index more than 44 percent apart, the biggest difference this year. The benchmark Kospi dropped below the psychologically important 2,000 mark once on Thursday for the first time in four months. Stocks dropped throughout the week, and while the decline was attributed to the Greek crisis, many in Asia believe the source of the problem is much closer. In China, the world's number two economy's benchmark Shanghai Composite Index fell by around 30 percent in the last three weeks. Despite a rebound on Thursday, thanks to regulators banning shareholders with big stakes from selling, concerns are that China's meltdown could be as bad as the 1929 stock market crash. There is a sense of uncertainty in the markets now following the drop in Chinese shares, even while the Chinese government sought measures to contain the market and while there is a lack of progress in the debt crisis in Greece. And the impact is becoming more pronounced in Korea, too. 
For Korea, China plays a much bigger role than Greece. On top of that, Korean companies such as Hyundai and Samsung aren't performing that well, so the problems in the domestic economy, in addition to the ones in China and Europe, all combined are a very risky situation for Korea. Some experts think China's Shanghai index will drop all the way down to the 3,000 level, calling for preemptive measures in Korea, as a collapse in China's financial market could heavily weigh down on domestic spending due to the two countries' substantial volume of trade. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. South Korea's foreign minister Yoon byung sae says there's little need for concern about Japan's recent backpedaling on its submission that it forced Koreans into slave labor at sites that recently gained UNESCO World Heritage status. That's because to stay on that list, Japan has to submit a progress report to that committee. For details, we turn to our Kim Hyun-bin. Korea's Foreign Minister Yoon byung sae has called on Japan to take sincere steps to fulfill international expectations and enhance bilateral ties between Seoul and Tokyo. This was one of the most difficult negotiations between Korea and Japan. I hope Tokyo will take follow-up measures that meet international expectations and by doing so, improve bilateral ties. The statement made Thursday at a forum at the Korea Press Center in Seoul comes after Japan failed to fully accept South Korea's demand to acknowledge that Koreans were forced to work at seven sites recently granted UNESCO World Heritage status. He said the English version of the statement has been officially adopted by the World Heritage Committee, and Japan should follow through on the promise it made to the UN body. Yoon also said there is no need to make predictions about what Japan will do as it must follow up on the matter by submitting a progress report by the end of 2017, which will be reviewed by the World Heritage Committee the following year. And if Japan's progress is deemed unsatisfactory, the sites could be removed from the UNESCO list. At the forum, hosted by Korean journalists, Yoon also discussed North Korea. He noted North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has executed more than 70 officials in his first three and a half years in power, which is seven times more than his father, Kim Jong-il. This indicates that the current North Korean leader is still struggling to maintain his grip on power. Yoon added that North Koreans appear to have become increasingly fearful of Kim's so-called reign of terror, with some seeking to defect to South Korea. The minister said President Park Geun-hye and her U.S. counterpart Barack Obama are expected to reach an important deal on ways to deal with the communist regime when they meet in Washington later this year. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. Colorful words fueled by anger and frustration directed not at South Korea or the U.S. of A., but this time on Japan. North Korea has called in Japan's wartime sexual enslavement of women, rather called it in the early 20th century, crime against humanity, which an even, even an animal would be ashamed of. The expression was used in an op-ed published in the North's state-run Nodong Shimun on Thursday, which also said, if Tokyo has even the slightest sense of guilt, it should offer the victims apology and compensation. The piece condemns Japan's distortion of history by highlighting a recent demand by a group of Japanese intellectuals that their government made a greater efforts to resolve the sexual enslavement issue and offer the victims a forthright apology. The two Koreas have agreed to meet for talks on their jointly run Kaesong Industrial Complex next Thursday. Seoul's Unification Ministry said Thursday that Pyongyang sent a letter agreeing to hold the sixth round of meeting for their joint committee on the management of the business park. Attention now shifts to whether the two sides will be able to resolve their ongoing tussle over a pay raise for the North Korean workers at the complex. Earlier this year, Pyongyang demanded a unilateral wage hike of over 5 percent for the workers but Seoul said the issue must be agreed upon through dialogue.
Now for the top international headlines, we connect to our Lee Ho at the News Center. Our focus today, Greece scrambles to finalize reforms planned for its latest bailout. South Carolina passed a bill to remove the Confederate flag and rapper Meek Mill tops U.S. Billboard charts. Now let's start with the first story. Greece is expected to submit a proposal for reforms any time now. Sanoa, could you give us the latest on where Athens stands? Well, Greece has been scrambling to finish up a plan of reforms for its latest bailout plea with hopes that this time the European Union will approve it. The nation has been trying desperately to avoid a painful exit from the euro currency and has until midnight today to draw up a proposal. This comes as Prime Minister Alexei Tsipras met with officials just a day after he asked for a three-year aid package from Europe's bailout fund, promising to implement reforms as quickly as he could. The details of the reform are to be submitted sometime today so that creditors can take a look at them, with the deadline looming just days ahead. In the meantime, the European Central Bank said it is prepared to take all measures to prevent any turmoil caused by the Greek crisis, of course using uh, emergency funds, but won't be able to support Greek banks for long. The U.S. state of South Carolina passed a bill earlier today to do away with the Confederate flag after hours of heated debate. The American Civil War flag has been a symbol of slavery and racism for some people, while a sign of Southern heritage for others. Now, after being approved by the Senate, the bill passed a final and third vote in the House of Representatives early in the morning, 94 to 20. Time's expired. Polls will close. Clerk will tabulate. A uh, vote of 93 to 7, Senate Bill 897 receives second reading. House will come to order. Gallery will please come to order. Absolutely no noise. Now, the bill has been handed over to Governor Nikki Haley for a signature, and she says she will definitely sign it. It took three days of intense debate for the bill to have finally passed, all this happening just three weeks after nine members of an African American church in Charleston were fatally shot. And moving on to entertainment, rapper Meek Mill topped the weekly U.S. Billboard 200 album chart, beating R&B artist Rigel by a wide margin. Mill's record Dreams Worth More Than Money sold as many as 215,000 albums, 222 songs, uh, 222,000 songs, and was streamed a whopping 14 million times. Now that comes down to a total of 246,000 units. Some interesting facts about the rapper. He once offended a pastor in Philadelphia with lyrics to his song, Amen, who then encouraged other boy, uh, others to boycott the rapper. Meek Mills also happens to have a long-standing rivalry with another fellow Philadelphia rapper, his name, Cassidy. Coming in at second was Miguel's Wild Heart, which sold 48,000 units, followed by 1989 by Taylor Swift which sold 47,500 units. And lastly, bouncing back into the charts again at number four was Ed Sheeran, who sold 39,000 copies of the album entitled X. And that does it for your international news today. I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Weather conditions in the Korean Peninsula for the last few days were completely different from one region to another. Heavy showers soaked the southern parts of the nation, including Seogipo in Jeju Island with 265 millimeters of torrential rain, while Seoul only saw 3.5 millimeters over the past two days. And Thursday was muggy under partly sunny skies in the capital. And tomorrow is shaping up to be even hotter with highs soaring to 33. And tomorrow's UV index will stand between high and very high, so it's best if you avoid being outside in the afternoon. And as for tomorrow's readings in other parts, Daegu and Gwangju will rise 29 and 31, and Busan will peak at 27. And as for the other regions, Adejan and Jeju Island will see a high of 31 and 28, while Dukdo rises to 25. Now, sweltering heat will peak on Saturday with the mercury skyrocketing to 34. Then we'll have relief on Sunday afternoon with rain, which should linger till Monday. And this time, the metro area will receive a nice amount of rain. Well, that's all for the weather. Good night.
And that brings us to the end of our newscast. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Hong Ji-hye. And this has been Daniel Che. Do join us again same time tomorrow. Goodbye for now.